uh, very good morning to our Indian participants and uh, hello to all the participants joining us from across the globe. Uh, we uh, today we are here for the second uh, online session on life skill moves and the topic which we are going to talk about uh, today is effective writing skills. In the previous week, we have discussed about effective listening skills, which was, I think, very, very useful to all, all of us. And it was also very, uh, very close to us, even if we are a part of a course or not. But the listening skills, I think, and even the writing skills are the basis for our daily to uh, day to day life. So I'm uh, if I remove the word engineers also for some time, I can uh, find it relevant I think for every person, maybe a few part of it, which can be useful specifically for the engineers, but in general, it encompasses all the uh, useful points, which can be, uh, which can be used by us in different uh, spheres of life. So uh, in uh, this week, we are going through various uh, topics under our module where we have uh, talked about job application letter, oral presentation skills, as well as visual presentation contents, how to prepare it. Then visual aids, how they can we can enhance our presentation visually and orally both. So it is a very, it's a combination of both the weeks, I would say. And uh, today we have with us uh, uh, Dr. C. Murli Krishna, uh, he's a professor and head department of English, director ELTC, Osmania University in Hyderabad, Telangana state, and uh, basically in India. So we welcome you, sir. I welcome you uh, on behalf of uh, the LSM team, as well as all the participants who have joined us uh, from like taking out time and uh, coming at this morning hour. So I welcome all of you and sir, both of you to uh, this interactive session. I'll request all uh, the participants to be attentive and uh, write down your questions and queries and we will be taking up at the end. You may post it in the question and answer box or you can post it in the chat box wherever you, kind of, you find it feasible. And at the end of the session, after around 25 minutes, we will be taking up all the queries and also, if you have any queries from the week one and week two, which you think has not, uh, you, you have come across, you can post that also. So we are open to queries. Uh, be attentive and have a great uh, learning today itself with uh, Dr. C. Murli Krishna. Uh, welcome you, sir. And I now hand over to you for, the, uh, for taking us through this knowledgeable journey and very soft knowledgeable journey, I'll say. Uh, welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Monica. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Manasji. Uh, uh, yeah, greetings from Hyderabad. Greetings uh, to all the uh, participants uh, from India and across um, outside India. And uh, greetings from India to the participants from outside India. So uh, last week, uh, if you recall, we had, uh, as uh, Dr. Nakpal has been mentioning, it, it was a kind of a uh, uh, discussion about effective listening skills, very closely related to the listening, speaking and reading skills are the writing skills. Uh, writing skills, uh, one of the core skills and one of the productive skills, uh, as you, some of you would, uh, uh, remember, listening and speaking are the receptive skills, uh, listening and uh, reading, uh, the speaking and writing are the productive skills. So uh, it's always uh, very relative uh, when you try to uh, look at uh, which is more important, the question of which is which skill is more important. There are times when uh, very effective writing skills um, do the trick, do, um, you know, gets across um, your ideas very well, uh, and it 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 uh, it is uh, required in a very formal uh, situation where you need to uh, write well and uh, communicate. In uh, because people uh, do not have that kind of a time these days to read the long uh, long drawn passages, long drawn uh, paragraphs, 
So writing has to be crisp. It has to uh, also mention the points. Uh, it has to hold the attention of the readers. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so much, uh, so many books have been published, uh, which uh, actually analyze the different aspects of writing. And um, I will take you through certain important components of writing quickly. And I'll also tell you uh, how a uh, lack of uh, if effectiveness in your writing can lead to a lot of ambiguity, can lead to a lot of um, you know, miscommunication as such. Uh, let me share the uh, PowerPoint with you. Yeah. Uh, you can see this, I suppose. Yeah, sir, it's perfectly visible. Uh, we can right. take it. Thank forward. you. So this is the title, Effective Writing Skills. Uh, uh, yeah, the word effective is, uh, I've not written it because I, I would be mentioning it in any case. And uh, all of us have writing skills, but how effective are these? That's the question. Uh, the first slide, will, uh, I would like uh, to begin uh, with uh, certain classic quotations on writing. Francis Bacon, uh, the great English uh, literator, once mentioned, reading make a full man, conference a ready man, and writing an exact man. Uh, then you have uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, the American uh, writer, the thing that gives me and has always given me the most happiness in life is writing. The mind celebrates a little triumph every time it formulates a thought. Then, of course, traditionally, many of our cultures, I'm sure it has been there, you are familiar with this traditional uh, kind of uh, wisdom. Uh, one time writing is 10 times reading. Uh, at least in India, many of us are familiar with this uh, uh, wisdom uh, that as uh, that our parents, grandparents have always told us. Uh, if you see Francis Bacon's quote, uh, reading, uh, wide reading makes you very well informed. You are a complete kind of a person. And conference here is to be seen as speaking skills. If you are good at speaking, you are a ready person for any context. Uh, but it is writing that makes uh, you an exact kind of a person because writing takes uh, demands a lot more vigor, a lot more uh, discipline because you, you have a chance to rewrite, uh, reconstruct your sentence and you know once it is published or once it is written and once it goes out, you cannot uh, do anything about it. Uh, unlike in speaking, you can always say, uh, you know, you can always rephrase immediately and uh, make it more focused, get the nuance right. So writing in that sense um, demands a lot of exactness and that is how your personality also becomes more exact. So that's Bacon. And of course, so Emerson is glorifying the skill of writing. Uh, it's a very personalized uh, statement where he felt the most happiness whenever he wrote. And uh, he says, every time you formulate a thought in writing on paper, it's a lighter, uh, li like a little victory, a little triumph. And uh, of course, uh, traditional one, uh, people say there's no point going on reading for your exams. You try and write it once. When you write it, you remember. And uh, when you're writing, actually, uh, nowadays, there is a speculative research going on. It's not published yet, but in the act of writing, your, the, the coordination between hand, uh, your eye, and the pen, uh, <clears throat> it has some kind of a very uh, therapeutic effect on a certain, certain uh, as, uh, parts of your brain. Writing, in that sense, is also seen as very soothing. Uh, it, it is relaxing. Many people tend to de-stress and uh, enjoy relaxation and happiness while writing. So it has uh, that kind of a effect on your um, brain waves. It helps you relax. 
uh, especially for writing a personal kind of uh, expressive writing. So uh, in that sense, uh, writing has many dimensions. Now, let me quickly take you to certain examples of bad writing. Now, ineffective, clumsy, ambiguous writing. Look at these sa samples. Now, uh, first example is woman without her man, comma, is nothing. Well, the same sentence with a little uh, difference in punctuation can mean the opposite. Woman, colon, without her, comma, man is nothing. You see, within uh, the one of the aspects of writing is punctuation. Uh, uh, little tinkering with the punctuation. You have not changed the word order. You have not changed the words but it means totally the reverse. Then there is a title of a book, um, a Rabbit Eats, Shoots and Leaves. But if you remove, uh, and it just says eats, uh, shoots and leaves, that's about an animal. But if you put a comma by mistake, eats, shoots and leaves, then you're talking about some person who is trigger happy. Uh, somebody who comes, eats and uh, shoots at people and leaves. Then this uh, uh, one of those very, very primitive kind of a message, messages sent across through the runners, across villages, across jungles. So some person in authority writes like this, hang him, don't leave him. That's, a, that's the judgment written by the authority. Uh, there again, hang him, don't. Uh, we're putting comma after don't leave him. Again, a question of life and death. Uh, one comma can make a difference at the right place or at the wrong place can make a difference. Then uh, look at the fourth one. He went to the market to sell his land along with his wife. Obviously, the person uh, does not have the intention of selling his uh, spouse also along with the land, but the way the word order has been constructed here it looks as if it's very ambiguous. So the word order has a problem here. It, the right thing would, should have been, he went to uh, the market uh, along with his wife to sell his land. Similarly, flying planes can be dangerous. Now, what exactly uh, does it mean? Uh, are you talking about, the, is the writer talking about you flying planes can be dangerous or anybody flying planes can be dangerous or did he mean that the general uh, kind of a idea that planes which are flying in the air can be dangerous anytime? Uh, <clears throat> also, when we breathe, we inhale. When we breathe out, we expire. Uh, this is a problem of vocabulary. Uh, it's not uh, expire, it should be exhale. So, but when you write expire, it has a different meaning. Now, somebody had written in a hotel, uh, a small note like this, please leave your values at the counter. Uh, again, a kind of a misunderstanding about the word valuables and values. Then again, a notice, ladies are requested not to have babies in the bar. Obviously meant not to get babies, but the way you use the word have babies, it's almost like um, you know delivering the babies. I am well, I hope you are in the same well. This is from a letter. This example is an example from a letter. A friend had written like this. I am well, I hope you are in the same well. Again, a wrong syntax. Uh, I hope you too are well. But if you use words like, I hope you are in the same well, uh, takes a different turn. Then this is an ad uh, that, which has been written like this, wanted a vegetarian cooker, 45 years old. Uh, so 45 years old, is, the, is it about the cooker or is it about the cook? The word is cook. So again, a vocabulary problem. Some more errors. A bakery signboard says a first class loafer, no, loaf of bread. Somebody who makes bread is called, uh, uh, you know, somebody bread maker actually. But if you are using loafer, then you are running into problems. Then this is a, again a very common uh, error. The prisoner was discharged today. 
the patient was released from the hospital, it should be the other way around. The prisoner was released from the jail, the patient was just discharged from the hospital. So a wrong kind of a words can lead to a lot of ambiguity. And then somebody in a classroom uh, on a summer day said something like this to uh, his classmate sitting at the other side of the uh, class, open the windows, let the air force come properly. Now, let the breeze, not air force. Uh, then I saw the principal going through the window. You saw through the window, the principal going somewhere else. I have just seen the principal passing away here. Now again, a bad kind of a phrasal verb. So these are common mistakes. Now if you look at these examples of bad writing, what you gather is this. Now that's what my next slide uh, tells you. It summarizes the problems. And these become the factors for effective writing. What are these factors which contribute to clear, fluent, and effective writing? Uh, let me, be, uh, it can be any order. All these are important. Now, for every piece of writing, there is a factor called uh, the process of writing, the writer's process. The writer has to get ideas, uh, has to get started. And then um, there are the rough copies that he writes, the drafts, and then uh, revising it. And then finally, finalizing a, uh, a draft for being the final draft. So this is the process which all of us go through, irrespective of whether it's a letter or an essay or a report. All kinds of writing, uh, in all kinds of writing, the writer goes through this process. The, he needs uh, to get ideas. Then, of course, uh, while writing, another factor which has to be borne in mind is the purpose of writing, the reasons for writing. Uh, unless and until you are aware of the purpose, you will not be able to write well. Why is that you are writing a piece of writing? So that purpose has to be clear, has to be identified by the writer. Then, of course, uh, who will be the readers, the audience? Um, in this case, the readers, who are, who are the people who are going to read this? That knowledge also has to be borne in mind. If somebody, if you're writing uh, a letter to somebody who's in a very, um, in a position of authority, who's superior to you in the office structure, then it has to be very, very formal and respectful. If it is a, somebody who's your equal, then it need not be so formal. And somebody who is your friend, uh, it can be very casual kind of a writing. And uh, if you are the boss, you can assume a kind of a slightly formal, but you can use words which are very discipline oriented. So who are going to be the readers and what is the purpose of reading? These things affect the process of writing. And of course, mechanics. The mechanics of writing, we mean three things, handwriting, spelling, and punctuation. These days, of course, handwriting is uh, good handwriting is less in demand because everybody is typing away. Everybody is pushing the buttons, laptop or the cell buttons. But uh, if you connect with what I said in the beginning, handwriting is very important for the muscular and uh, brain co coordination. The act of writing something, the use of the pen, the pencil, uh, it has a very, very salubrious effect, a very, very effect, uh, very, very therapeutic effect. And I feel one should not lose touch with one's handwriting. And many people write so beautifully. Uh, so that should be maintained, kept in touch. And for those of us whose handwriting is not very legible or uh, who are not following rules, it's important to develop your handwriting so that it acquires a legibility which is generally acceptable and that kind of a standard has to be maintained throughout. So not losing touch with handwriting is very important. It's one of the important mechanics. And uh, as I said, the punctuation. I've given you examples of how a punctuation can make a total topsy-turvy of the meaning of a sentence, irrespective of whether you have changed the words or not. And the spelling. Spellings these days, of course, you have the spell check, uh, but it's important 
to get your spelling accept because spellings have evolved over the period of time like other aspects of language so if a word is badly spelt it has a kind of a negative impact on the reader uh spelling is that's why it's uh, that's why you have major competitions the spell bee and things like that all over the world and um, there is a simple spelling society that was st started in england a few years back but uh, but some of these modern uh, spellings especially in a language like english uh, because so much has been published so much has been gone, so much has gone into the print it's difficult to unlearn those, that kind of a spelling but spellings have evolved over a period of time some of the inconsistencies of spelling are maintained as convention like why do you write p in front of psychology in the word psychology or why do you write b uh, in doubt uh, but we continue to do it uh, although you, we know it is a silent letter so silent it's not that we can dispense with silent letters Uh, letters which are silent just because you don't uh, doesn't carry a sound because that's a convention now and it has gone into print uh, yeah when it comes to informal social media kind of writing people are doing that kind of a simplification um, using short forms or uh, removing double letters but in formal writing it's important to maintain the standard spelling uh that is the mechanics factor you have the organization uh organization uh of a piece of writing you have sentences then uh, you move on to from legible sentences from intelligible sentences you move on to intelligible paragraphs paragraphs have to be constructed very very uh carefully keeping the readers in mind and uh, one also has to have knowledge of a topic sentence every paragraph will have a main sentence that is a topic sentence it could have been written actually there or sometimes a topic sentence is also implicit it's not written but you can feel the topic sentence governing the rest of the sentences uh, so topic sentence the command over uh, identification of topic sentences in a paragraph makes your writing very very cohesion and that uh, that is how cohesion comes into play cohesion is this kind of a um, um, unity this kind of agreement between sentences and between paragraphs and then once you take care of cohesion you also take care of coherence the meaning making the meaning conveying aspect of language uh, and that's what when i said unity of ideas you are actually talking about the agreement between sentences and between paragraphs um, it has to be logical it has to be even in creative writing creative writing of course um, it's a different kind of a uh, dynamic altogether but in regular kind of writing you have to hold on to the idea of topic sentences paragraph expansion and uh, cohesion and coherence and uh, you need to maintain the unity or the agreement uh the balance between ideas and the use of linkers linkers are basically thought connectors they are uh, they are the words and expressions which connect two sentences like words like however um every day morning i get up at 5 o'clock um uh, to to go out for my jog uh then you can say however today i could not go on account of my being unwell so you have word like however nonetheless yet or moreover furthermore um and is also a linker so there are so many linkers the effective use of the knowledge of linkers enhances your writing effectiveness so that's the organization part of writing then we move on to the factor of syntax syntax is a sentence sentence structure and the stylistic choice you have seen in that example how the ambiguity comes uh, because you have not uh, written it in the right order that's a syntactical problem when somebody says i went to the market to sell my land along with my wife it's a syntax problem 
they're leading to that kind of an ambiguity. So how do you word your, how do you uh, formulate your the structure of a sentence? Like, for example, in English, you, uh, are you, um, how are you is like agreed as a right syntax. You cannot write, are you how? Or you are how, you are how. You cannot write like that. So you need to be careful with the accepted uh, and know what is the accepted syntax and use that syntax script. And the stylistic choice. Uh, are you using uh, words uh, with an intent? Are you using very archaic words? Or are you using current words? Um, you know, simply you cannot use very, very archaic. You cannot use words like me things or fantabulous. Uh, these are not, uh, these are stylistic choices which when you make or don't make, uh, you lend a certain effect to your writing. And uh, unless it is warranted, you should not use very archaic words or words which are, uh, which are considered as part of passive vocabulary. Then of course, you have the content factor. What you're writing, there is the, the, what the matter that you're writing that has to be relevant. There has to be a clarity in what you're writing. There has to be uh, clearness and it has to be original. The originality of a topic is um, important. Like when you write essays, there has to be a logic. You, you cannot simply um, copy somebody else's uh, writing or ideas, originality. Ideas, of course, um, nobody can hold ideas because ideas move from one person to other. But even then, um, if it is not a patented idea, it's freely available, like it's there in the air. So you can build on that idea, but there are ideas and innovations which are patented. You cannot do anything about it. Uh, so what you write should be original. So uh, in research writing today, in article publications, you have the concept of plagiarism. Plagiarism is the ethicality, the ethics behind writing. Uh, how true are, is your writing to yourself? Or is it all stolen kind of a writing? So you have uh, software, as many of you would know, Turnitin and a few other uh, softwares which check the originality of writing and if there is a lot of similarity of writing with what is already published or which is already there in the, in the medium, then you are punished for that. You are disqualified from submitting that report or that article or that thesis. So similarity index should be very, very minimal. Of course, sometimes you're also quoting. Yeah, um, I heard a sound, uh, Dr. Monica, is everything fine? Yeah, I think I got disconnected because of the connectivity issue. I'm okay. in again, so. Uh, even my, uh, my icon doesn't appear, that's why I got a doubt. No, no, otherwise it's going fine. It was just my connectivity issue, so I've changed the connection. Okay, you can see me speaking now. Yes, yes, I can see you as well as the slide. Everything is okay. Okay, thank you. So that's about the content. There has to be logic, there has to be originality of ideas, um, plagiarism, how to avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism is a bad thing to do in writing. You need to avoid it. And, um, and then these days in all universities and all research centers, only 10%, at, at least in India, only 10% similarity is allowed, not more than that. Uh, the grammar, the grammar factor, the rules of agreement, uh, like you can't say he, he go or he went, uh, he doesn't, he don't know, things like that. These are problems of agreement between verbs and uh, verb and uh, subject, then articles, uh, the use of a and the very important uh, and uh, is used before uh, words beginning with, with the vowel sound a is used before uh, words beginning with the 
consonant sound like you say a chair but you say an uh, an an umbrella and then when you are trying to refer to something specific the semka the the sem this uh, the center for educational media so you are referring to one particular kind of a center then of course uh, you have word choice the, this is the other fact the use of uh, the right word vocabulary uh, uh, once again so uh, i'm in a class sir i'll call you back not one more this word choice is about uh, like in the examples that i have given you somebody was using words like values instead of valuables uh, air force instead of breeze um, so like you cannot say my friend is outstanding just because he is standing outside the room because if you say outstanding has a different kind of a syntax a uh, different kind of a semantic property somebody is extraordinary you can say outstanding but you cannot say just because they are standing outside so these are problems of understanding and that tends to interfere with the right choice of vocabulary so these are the major factors uh, which contribute to effective writing the these factors have to be borne in mind and uh, always uh, we are conscious of this in speaking also many of these things are useful but writing you are putting down everything on paper so your organization your mechanics these things matter a lot syntax and uh, it's it's a lot more demanding kind of a uh, activity writing yeah i'll skip this activity part yeah lord byron again an english writer once said a drop of ink makes thousands perhaps millions think that's the power of writing then you have the, uh, the famous writer quintil in the philosopher all language demonstrates three kinds of excellence correctness precision and elegance uh, correctness is acceptability precision is accuracy and elegance is a style language also has the same number of faults and these are the opposites of qualities just mentioned if you are incorrect if you are imprecise if you are very unelegant then your language doesn't have that kind of effect writing can also be seen as a skill of communicating with uh the now audience the readers or later audience readers through the medium of paper screen display the effectiveness of writing depends among other factors primarily on the clarity of expression in addition to clarity of expression an effective writer also needs to have a good style that is appropriate and ambiguous unambiguous in the act of writing anything the effort to express ideas in the constant use of eye hand and the brain comprises a unique way of reinforcing learning and discovering new ways of expressing ideas reading is a skill that is very closely related to writing this is a new kind of a uh, research finding every act of writing is seen as an act of reading and reading itself is a kind of writing a very a very crucial kind of a link the way you write is also the way you read so it's important to be conscious of that from one perspective writing is a way in which we evaluate or express reading skill and reading is a way in which we evaluate writing skill the close relationship between writing and thinking on one hand writing and reading on the other hand makes writing a very valuable part of any language learning and skill acquiring program
while writing a paragraph, you need to take care of organizing the ideas logically. I mentioned organization as a factor. Uh, the ideas have to be presented in a coherent manner. I also mentioned topic sentence. That's the main sentence of the paragraph con conveying. The topic sentence conveys a central theme or idea of the paragraph. It is generally written in the beginning of a sentence of a paragraph. However, it can be written either in the middle or at the end of the paragraph. Sometimes a topic sentence can also be unwritten. It can be implicit within a paragraph when it is not written. The other sentences of a paragraph should lend support and substantiate the topic sentence. So there is a difference between the role that the topic sentence plays and the other sentences play in a paragraph. The, all the other sentences, they are reinforcing the idea that the main topic sentence conveys. While writing a paragraph, in order to maintain a logical order of ideas, you need to develop the skill of sequencing the ideas appropriately. Now, sequencing is a very important, the logic, the unity, all these are um, subsumed in the idea, the skill of sequencing. Sequencing is a skill of organizing a textual material, deciding the priority, the focus of the different points, and consequently the order in which they should be presented in a paragraph. Now, how does sequencing, how does it get achieved? Sequencing is also about linking up ideas and concepts and using the correct linkers to show the relationship they have with one another. So as I mentioned uh, a brief while ago, linkers are essentially thought connectors. Uh, these are basically uh, some of the widely used linkers are as follows. In addition to further, moreover, apart from, although, however, in spite of, though, whereas, on the contrary, for example, for instance, indeed, in contrast, whereas, instead, Similarly, additionally, fortunately, um, besides, in other words. So these are some of the commonly used, widely used linkers in writing. And you need to use them uh, appropriately and uh, at the right places. In addition to using linkers, sequencing also involves using the appropriate words and making the writing brief, crisp, and clear. So the appropriate words, uh, along with a good mix of linkers, makes your writing brief, crisp, and clear. So I'll stop there. Dr. Monica? Yes. Uh, I was about to, <laughs> about to uh, kind of say, request that we can now move to the participants. Yeah. And I think you've taken it. Uh, so uh, now, uh, as we are uh, towards the end of this session, I will request my participants uh, to ask your queries if you have any. Uh, as I mentioned in the uh, starting that you may ask from the module also, as well as anything from the, during the session you have come across which you really want to clarify, or I think you may go beyond a little bit about any writing skill, if you have any question, we may try to take it. Sir will be uh, with us for uh, helping us out resolve our queries. Uh, we have Leshwin Budia who has uh, mentioned in the chat box. Uh, she has a uh, regarding writing skills. Uh, Leshwin, uh, I'll just try and unmute you so that you can ask your question. Just give me, yeah. I have allowed you to talk, uh, I think, Leshwin. Uh, uh, I have unmuted uh, Leshwin for the question. You may now ask your question. Or any other participants, they, you may raise your hands so that I can unmute you. 
allow you to talk or you can post in the chat box if you have any question. So, Basama, uh, Basama Bana Shetty, I have uh, allowed you to talk. You have raised the hand. Kindly unmute yourself and ask your question. Basama yeah, ji, uh, can you can please I, ask your question? Yes. Dr. Uh, uh, Monica, there I can yes, read two, two queries here. Uh, Leshwin Bulia's query, can you elaborate on the type of writing, expository writing? He's talking, is asking about expository writing. I can take that and uh, say that, you know, any kind yes. of a de detailed exposition, uh, it, it is one of the uh, essay writings. It, it's not, it, it is a combination of this uh, descriptive writing and also analytical writing. So that you you sort of anal analyze, describe uh, a few um, topics under the main topic, and um, it's it's a very long kind of a writing. It can run into um, a few pages. It can also, uh, you know, be brief, uh, one page, two pages. This is, I would see this is the expository writing. Then there is somebody called uh, Sahadat. Bangladesh. He says, I don't do write, but not regularly. I cannot measure the improvement. What can I do to improve? Yeah, like in other skills, I think uh, improvement happens only through a regular uh, kind of a practice. One needs to keep writing, not lose an opportunity to write uh, for different purposes in different contexts. And that is how one improves. Uh, handwriting can be improved through handwriting books, if it is that kind of improvement you have in mind. But uh, writing is something that uh, I have seen some of the worst writers or some of the bad writers today, they are writing so regularly to papers, to journals, just because they kept the habit of writing, putting down on paper and fine tuning their ideas. So it comes through kind of a regular kind of practice. Uh, uh, Mr. Samir Jamatia, you may also ask your query. Yes, Samir. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, sir, I'm just asking just a little bit. Uh, we are the Northeastern part, so our mother tongue is the Tipuri, but Sometimes we spelling some uh, on language. So if we write uh, on the uh, English, so difficult to coming for spell, uh, spelling the uh, on language, like the traditional language. Yeah. So so how can the the improvement this is uh, for the, our writing system that I'm telling? So. Hmm. As I said uh, to a question by one of the other participants. Spellings, uh, spelling. There's a lot of uh, I, I, and uh, you know involved there. How you take in you know, a printed word, and how you remember that word, and how you recall that word. So practice, exposure. These are the key words. Exposure to writing, good spelling. Good writing will have good spelling. So you need to read, uh, expose yourself. A lot of reading will help. You become reading, in fact, is uh, one of the primary ways of listening and the receptive skills, when you keep doing, they contribute to your speaking and writing. When you read more, when you listen more, when you observe more, you are able to remember those words, those spellings, and you're able to use them correctly. So the interesting thing is not to do these skills in isolation. The interesting thing is to let 
make use of whatever reading you can do, whatever listening you can do, take in, receive, receive those the inputs, and then automatically, if you read more, you are you become a very engaging kind of a speaker. If you read more, you uh, if you listen and read more, you are becoming a, not only an engaging speaker but also a very uh, very uh, effective, powerful kind of a writer yourself. Because ideas ultimately there has to be ideas and reading helps you consolidate it, consolidate your spelling and your syntax. So I would say practice and exposure are the key words. Right, sir. I think this question is very this question is very relevant across uh, the people. Like uh, whether it's we are coming from a regional this thing or even uh, developing in the state like place like Delhi also or any metropolitan place. Uh, think from childhood, very beginning, we have been listening this. You read the newspaper. You listen to the uh, uh, news especially parents used to say, but now I think watching movies also is helping a lot in uh, language, uh, this kind of vocabulary development as well as other aspects of language. Samir, do you have any further query or? Uh, yes, thank you, ma'am. It's, it's, it's enough, ma'am. Thank you. Right, right. Any other query or uh, we may, uh, we can now close the session. I think today uh, we had good queries, the number of queries, whether it was less, but I think um, the points which you covered with, they were, uh, I think whatever relevant questions were there, I, the participants have already taken. Um, I'll just uh, maybe kind of uh, uh, summarize this uh, session in few words that today we, we've been talking about uh, effective writing skill. So from my knowledge, we have basically two ends. One is receiving end, one is the delivering end. So the previous uh, week's uh, session was on receiving end. Now we have been the writing skill or uh, the speaking the skill end. if it's, we are at the delivering end. So we have talked about the delivering end and effective communication is basically a trick of making a balance between all of these, which uh, through which we are either receiving or delivering, because communication is not just one way. Like it's not just delivering or just receiving, but it's a very good balance. And we have to have a trick which can come through practice as well as maybe reading a lot, which uh, is my mm. understanding. And then. Uh, one time writing is uh, 10 times reading that again uh, goes that we need more input to give maybe, uh, you know, uh, to give out something very specific also. Uh, as a researcher, if we have some researchers here, uh, I think we can understand it well, not just in Indian context, but also across the globe that we go through, I think, thousands of research papers and then we uh, kind of, <laughs> we come up with, a very, very, from each research paper, we come out with one, just one line of writing or adding it in our research work. So that's a very good example that how much reading is required for a little writing. That's basically mm -hmm. food for thought, what we get and then with what we come out with. Then sir has uh, focused on ambiguities in uh, writing, which I think we all deal with. Even if I'll, I'll uh, very openly say this, once we all write and we all go back and read after maybe a little gap, we will find out the ambiguities because we kind of do that. Uh, we, we have that ambiguity in our writing still. So it's always good that once we, we have written, we should take a break from it and then we should come back and wow. then read it and we'll find out and we'll be able to improve it. Absolutely. Next is uh, factors contributing to effective writing from the mechanical aspects of writing to the thoughtful aspects. Everything was covered uh, very uh, one by one and in, in quite detail so that we mm -hmm. have all the understanding of these aspects. Uh, 
I also got disconnected in between. So if I missed anything during the presentation, that's my loss. Maybe I'll be able to listen to the whole of presentation once again. Uh, so this was the presentation for today. And uh, this will be uploaded on the MOOCs portal for the convenience of all the participants who have joined and who have not joined. So kindly go through this uh, video once again for the clarity on these topics. And I'll uh, thank uh, uh, Dr. Morley Krishna, sir, for a very, very uh, simple yet very informative uh, session, very concise, I will say. We have not gone way forward and then it's sometimes it, 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 it becomes difficult to understand that, okay, we have covered so much, but we have covered so much in a such a concise way that I think I could give it in so simple words. That's mm. I think uh, his, uh, this language expertise that the way you put up things in such simplicity that we also are able to understand every point of it. Every, the language is also very simple for us to understand. And I think, I hope, all the participants also have enjoyed this session. Uh, that's it for now. Any last words from you, sir? Yeah. Um, thank you for those uh, that uh, kind of a good recapitulation. Uh, this uh, word mechanics, uh, not many people, I what I come across is people get this wrong. They think mechanics of writing means all the things that I have mentioned there, all those factors. But mechanics basically is those three only. The, right. the handwriting, the spelling, and the punctuation. Punctuation. Uh -huh. yes. So uh, the other factors are very important. But when we say mechanics of writing, uh, we should uh, we should keep th these three in mind. Right. That is uh, what I would just want to clarify because uh, many people think that mechanics includes everything. Mechanics basically are the manual things, the spelling, the handwriting. And the and so, the punctuation. Basically, uh, uh, what Sir is saying, I think, is the factors are considered as mechanics. So these are two different mechanics. Mechanics is just one simple part covering three uh, sub parts, which is handwriting, spelling, and punctuation, which are very very technical things. After that comes the beautification of language. I think everything uh, coming together are the factors. Only three are these. Three are the mechanics of the effective writing. Uh, that's great, sir. Thank you so much. I thank all the participants. I thank you, sir, on my behalf, behalf of Dr. Manas Ranjan Panigrahi. He has uh, left the meeting uh, for some other uh, engagement. And I thank all of you on behalf of uh, Life Skill MOOC team. We will be meeting uh, the next Thursday also the same way. Kindly come uh, with your questions because that makes the session interactive. That makes us also happy and uh, more alert that, okay, we have to cover everything. So please keep us on our toes so that uh, we can discuss and we can talk and learn more. Thank you any, so much. Any idea how many uh, participants have registered for this program? I, I didn't. Uh... Uh, sir, it's above, I think, 2000. The latest mm. number I've not checked, 2000 till 2000, I had uh, checked mm. on that. So I think uh, we should uh, try and, uh, you know, like uh, make it possible for more people to, you know, uh, join the